Hello everyone and welcome to this quick bit tutorial. So in this quick bit tutorial I just wanted to show you some very basic techniques that I used to add some very general dirt to my assets. Now this asset I got from Modelhaven which is a website, uh, I think it's just called modelhaven.com where you can just basically get free, uh, free assets basically. So I'm just using this one as a quick example. So I'm just going to go over like a few basic techniques. You can see that there is already some dirt included in here, which was already in like the base texture. But that's totally fine, we can just build upon this. So, I have my model, and I have some baked maps over here. Now, these baked maps, they don't need to be anything special. The only one that we really care about is the ambient occlusion and the curvature. And I see also the position map is also really nice. So, I like to always get started by just creating a folder. Call it general dirt, and I do this for most of my assets, of course. The dirt itself depends on what I'm actually making, but I tend to go for a general dirt, and then I add a very simple fill layer. Now I call this fill layer OCC dirt, because this is going to be uh, occlusion dirt. Now in the base color, I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to go for like a very basic, a little bit brownish looking, yeah, like a little bit brownish looking dirt, some, something like this for example. And you want to set your roughness quite low, because dirt is of the, dirt and dust are often very dull looking. And it just adds something nice to your roughness. Then, add a very simple black mask to this. And then you can go into your smart masks and add one that is called dust occlusion. So when you add this one, it's quite nice, it will just add like some extra little bit of dirt and dust in between every cavity. And this is based upon your ambient occlusion. So wherever your ambient occlusion is, there is where... That is where some dirt will be. See? You can go into your dirt mask and like increase the dirt levels and increase the roughness. Now another cool one is for example, what if you... This is like a barrel. It's standing on the ground. What if it is standing on a sandy ground? And you want to create some very quick looking dirt that is just creeping up from the top. The way that you can do this is you can very simply duplicate this layer. Right click and duplicate. Call it ground dirt. And get rid of this uh, mask over here. And for this there is literally a mask called ground dirt. Which we can use. Now this stuff is of course very basic. There are so many masks. I would recommend just playing around with it. You also have dirt ground. Which is like slightly different. Over here. But uh, let's go ahead and this one. What I tend to do is I tend to get rid of my grunge map. And then I tend to just go into my mask, into my mask editor. And one thing I never really like about the ground dirt is the look of the actual dirt pattern over here. So what I tend to do is I tend to go to crunches. And in here I tend to just drag in a bunch of crunches into your texture input at the very bottom. Until you get something that you like basically. Just uh, something that you think okay that looks nice. I can use that. And you can just play around with it. Try and find something interesting. Maybe like um, you have like sweeps and... Swipes and all this kind of stuff until it looks very interesting. So I'm gonna go, let's see, crunch dirt. Here, let, let's do this one. This one is called crunch dirt tin. And you can, of course, play around with your balance to increase it or decrease it. Now, in order to basically change your position, you just want to go into your position gradient. And in here, if you change your balance, you can, of course, create more or less. For example, if you want to have like very soft dirt that is very high. You can set the balance high and the contrast very low. Or if you want to have like very strong base dirt. You can for example do something like this where you set your balance a bit lower. Now I don't know why my PC is so slow. Maybe because I'm working in 4K. So let's just go ahead and set this to 2K. But yeah so basically you can just go ahead and I like to always just have like a little bit of dirt like this. And of course if you want. You can use your opacity slider next to this dirt. To make it more or less intense. Now let's say that you want to have some roughness variation and you can also translate this into dirt variation. The way that you would do this is you would add a very simple fill layer. Let's call it roughness underscore ver for variation. And you would only the things that you want. So let's say we do not want to have any dirt on this. We can just turn everything off except for our roughness. Now this roughness will now control the overall roughness of your mesh. But if you add a very simple black mask to this. And we want to use a crunch map, so what we need to do, because you cannot just drag a crunch map on a mask, is you need to go down here and add a fill layer. So when you do that, it will give you a grayscale input, and you can plug in whatever you want. So let's say we go for like some wipes, for example. 
we can plug in those wipes in here. And then we can go back to the very center and we can say like, okay, I want this crunch map to be very dull looking. And then you can see that you get like some variation in your actual roughness map. Now, I don't really like this one, so we can like play around with it until you find one that you like. You can also once again play around with like your balance and everything. And you can go up here and for example, set your tiling to be a little bit higher. It all depends on what you want. Here, let's say like I'm gonna go for like a grunge map 013. And then I'm just going to make my roughness like a little bit less like this. See? So now I can just see this roughness looking quite nicely. If you have some nasty seams or something going on, depending on your model, you can always go in this grunge map and you can set it from UV projection to triplanar projection. With triplanar projection, it will basically project it as a box, which means that it will not rely on your UVs. And if you then press R, you can scale this up and down and it will just basically try its best to project your texture. It's almost like using the normal projection mode, which you also have over here where you can normally paint so stuff in. But then in general, it just gives you something like this. Now one final trick that I like to do, and it's almost like, it just gives like an interesting look. For example, for plastics, plastics often have like color washing out and uh, just slight color variations in it. I like to often create like a folder, call it color, color ver. And in here, I like to just throw in like a fill layer. It's called A. And just set a color and just make it like a crazy color. I'll make it like red. Then duplicate this. Call this one B. And make this one, for example, like, uh, okay, we already have blue. Let's make this like pink. And let's then go ahead and duplicate this again. Call this C. And maybe make this one like white. Now with these uh, few color variations, what we can do. See, you know what, let's make this one uh, more like. Uh, actually, no, no, I want to keep it pink. You want to go ahead and you want to add a black mask to all of them. Like this. And then you want to add a very quick fill layer to all of them. Now you're just going to drag in some random grunge maps. So let's say grunge map 013. Play around with it a bit. Let's go, for example, for like, um, I don't know, um, grunge dirt. It doesn't really matter too much because it will be so subtle that you will not be able to see very specific details. But basically, once you're done with this, you can play around with your balances to get like more or less. So here, yeah, this is like the, the white one is uh, being really overpowering. So let's reduce that a little bit more until we get almost like a painting, something like this. Now, with all of these colors, all you need to do is in your base color, tone it way down. Here, yeah, so if you tone this fa down very, very low, it will just give you like the slightest hint of like some interesting colors going on uh, that has like some bleaching. Now, sometimes it looks like that, for example, in this case, I want to like um, maybe like increase my red a little bit and maybe like play around with the offset. Let's play around with the offset of them. Yeah, because then we can like choose exactly where we want everything to be. Yeah, let's do some purple in there. Maybe reduce my white even more. Something something like this might work a little bit better. Yeah, and tone this down. And as you can see, if I set this very low to like 3, for example, it will just give you some very, very small subtlety. And there we go. Now this is already starting to look a lot more dirty. We got some stuff here on the top. All that nice stuff. Of course, let's say that this is metal over here. You can do the same thing where you can add metal scratches. So call it a like edge damage. And you can, for example, go in and you can make the metallic all the way up. Make the roughness quite smooth. Add a black mask. And then you can, for example, go into your smart masks and add like a, um, let's say like a gun edges over here. Which will just add like some small stuff over here. Now you can also choose this to be not so much metallic or maybe like metallic, but very dull looking like this. Just in general. You can choose whatever you want. And if you only want to have this on your metal, you can always add a folder. Call it metal mask. Throw your fill layer in this folder. And simply add a black mask to this. And then select your metal. In my case, I'm doing this simply by going to my polygon fill. And in here, if I go to UV, I can like select just the metal bit. See? 
And then I can just keep playing around with it. Let's say that I want to have this like whiter, for example. Or I want to have like a little bit more shiny, all that kind of stuff. All that fancy stuff you can just play around with until you get exactly what you want. And you can also play, keep playing around with like your opacity. So that's it. Those are some very quick techniques on how I add like some scratches, some general color and roughness variation, and some general dirt. So yeah, it's very introductory, introductory, but I hope that some people will find this useful. And I hope to see you in my next quick bit.